Come on, everybody. Let's go. Get ready for a summertime adventure from another summertime story. This is the story of Miserable Millie, written and told by award-winning author Carl Summer. Millie lived in a nice house with Papa, Mama, and her older brother and sister, Willie and Betsy. Millie had lots of toys to play with, plenty of good food to eat, and a cozy bed to sleep in. But Millie was always miserable. To her, the whole world was unfair. Whenever Papa or Mama gave their children chores to do, Millie constantly complained. I always have to do the most work. This made Papa and Mama very sad because it was not true. But Millie did not care. In her mind, whatever she felt was unfair had to be true. And that was all that mattered to Millie. What did Millie always complain about? Juliet? I always have the most work, and that's not true. Yes, I always have to do the most work. But it wasn't true. And how did a mom and dad feel about this, Juliet? Sad that Millie says that. Very sad that Millie said that. You know, it hurts your parents when you say, you're unfair, you're not treating me right. No, your parents don't want to treat you unfair. But if, they, if you do something wrong, they're going to punish you. That's not being unfair. And some children go through life that way. My parent always punishes me the most. I do the most work around here. Well, if you're a little bit older, you ought to do more work than your younger ones. Your younger brother or sister. You're older. And a parent's very sad and she's just, it's just unfair. And nothing you can do to change your mind. Let's see what happens to Millie. Whenever Millie went to bed, she always grumbled. All oh, my friends can stay up late watching TV, but I can't. Millie was not sure this was true, but that is the way she felt. What did Millie complain now about, Miguel? She feels sad because that she, her friends get to stay up late, but she wasn't sure of it, and she has to go to bed at a certain time. Yes, so she's really lying. She's not sure, sure, she's making up these stories. All oh, my friends, did you ever say that? All oh, my friends, they, they can stay up later, but not me. Oh, don't talk like that, it's lying. Exaggerating is lying. And she's miserable now. She's making up stories, that's the way she felt. However I feel, that's what it's gotta be. Nonsense. <laughs> don't make up stories. But your parents have bedtimes. If they're good parents, they're going to make sure you get enough sleep. And so many children complain, oh, why do I have to go to bed so early? Why do I, and they gripe and they complain and going to bed is a big problem. Foolish. And the same child, when it's time to get up in the morning, they don't want to get out of bed. Well, that means they're not getting enough sleep. So learn to listen to your parents when they said at pet bedtime, trust them, and go to bed at that time. And you'd be a lot happier if you say, okay, Dad, Mom, that's what you want me to do? I'll do it. Whenever Millie played games with Willie and Betsy, she always wanted to play according to her rules. But Willie and Betsy would insist, we need to play according to the rules of the game. If Millie did not get her way, she would quit playing and yell, you're stubborn. You always want to play your way. One day, Millie announced, I'm going to the park to play. It's dangerous for young girls to go alone to the park, warned Mama. All my friends can go wherever they want, cried Millie. Why can't I? I can't do anything by myself. You need to trust us, said Mama. Millie stumped out of the room, mumbling, It's not fair. No one ever trusts me. Why did Millie's mom not want her to go to the park? 
Olivia? Because it was dangerous for young girls to go alone in the park. Yes. I don't even want my young, my young boys to go to the park because I knew what kind of kids hung around there. I lived very close to a park in New York City when my children were growing up. I wouldn't allow them to go there because of the kind of kids that hung, hung around there. Now, if I went there, that would be okay. You know, your parents are concerned about who your friends are. I always was. You show me who your friends are, I'll show you what kind of person you're going to become. I wanted my kids to have good friends, and I was careful who they their friends were. Here's Millie's mom concerned where she's going to go. But no, I go, my friends can go wherever they want. Millie asked the question, why can't I do anything by myself? What did Millie's mom say? Jocelyn? You need to trust us. You need to trust us. And that's the big issue. Do you trust your parents? Millie didn't. It's unfair. You don't let me go any place. I can't do anything by myself. She didn't trust her parents. I'm a parent. I'm also a grandparent. I know a lot of things that you kids don't know. And I'm going to protect you if you were my children. And I did that with my own children. Learn to trust your parents. You'd be a lot happier if you learned that lesson. When Millie was in school, she often talked to the girl in front of her. The teacher would say, Millie, stop talking to Susie. When the teacher was not looking, Millie always complained to Susie. The teacher is so unfair. She only picks on me. One day while playing in the backyard, Willie accidentally bumped Millie. Ouch, screamed Millie. Why did you hit me? I'm sorry, stammered Willie. It was an accident. No, it wasn't, insisted Millie. She picked up a stick and began hitting Willie on the head. When Mama heard Willie yelling, she rushed to the window and called them both in. After hearing what had happened, Mama scolded Millie. Go to timeout right now. Tonight, you're going to bed early. Millie stomped off to the corner. When Betsy walked past her, Millie sobbed. Why should I always get punished, not Willie? He hit me first. Willie bumped you by accident, explained Betsy. You're against me too, cried Millie. I'm always the one being picked on. What is Millie complaining about now, Deshaun? That she's the only one getting picked on. Yeah, it's always me, always me. I get the short end of the stick. They all, everybody's picking on me. Everything's unfair, unfair. It's not true. You don't go hit your brother. Someone accidentally bumped you. And I've seen that. You see, I substituted in 27 different schools as a, as a teacher, or ter teaching all grades from 1 to 12, all right, in all the five boroughs of New York City, to write my book, Schools in Crisis, Training for Success or Failure. I've seen some things that are very bad. And there's some kids, if you just accidentally bump them, who oh, you think you're hitting here? They got such a short temper, and particularly the different race. Right away, hey, you, 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 you want to fight? Hey, take it easy. I just bumped you accidentally. There's people like that, very touchy. Right? And it's a foolish way to live. And here, her brother just accidentally bumped into Millie, and she's taking a stick and hitting him with it. And mom's punishing her, and she ought to be punished. I'll give you a little secret, okay? Can you remember this? This is a secret, okay? You'll never be punished again. Just listen to your parents. You'll never have to be punished. But sometimes boys and girls are so foolish, the parents punish them and punish them and punish them, and they're so stubborn they keep on doing the same thing. That's a foolish way to live. Trust your parents. Do what they tell you. You'll never be punished again. Parents don't want to punish you. They don't. I never did. Believe me. But I didn't get five little angels coming down from heaven <laughs> with my five kids, right? So sometimes I had to punish them because they didn't listen. And not that I wanted to, but I want them to learn. And fortunately, three of my 
sons work with me. So they did turn out okay for me. But you be smart. You learn to listen and obey and trust your parents. Millie's family was invited to a wedding. In order to be noticed, Millie put on a red skirt, orange blouse and socks, blue shoes, green ribbons on her ears, and carried a yellow purse. When her mother saw her, she exclaimed, Millie, your clothes don't match. Millie put her hands on her hips and whined, Why can't I wear what I want? Everyone else wears whatever they want. You're not going to the wedding dressed like that, insisted Mama. Millie stomped out of the room crying. <laughs> Millie constantly had something to grumble about. If anything bad happened to her, it was always someone else's fault. In her eyes, she never did anything wrong. As Millie lay in bed that night, she got so disgusted at how everyone was so mean and unfair to her that she got out of bed and made a list of her complaints. I work harder than anyone around the house. I go to bed earlier than all my friends. No one ever plays by my rules. I can't eat whatever I want. I can't watch what I want on TV or the internet. My friends can go anywhere, but I can't. Teachers only pick on me. I'm the only one who gets punished. I can never wear clothes I like. No one ever trusts me. I want you down to listen very carefully to Millie's complaints. And some of these might be your complaints. But notice how she exaggerates the issues. That night, with tears rolling down her cheeks, Millie groaned. Everyone hates me. Papa, Mama, Willie, Betsy, friends, teachers, everyone. I can't do anything I want. It's so unfair. No one has it as bad as I do. I'm the most miserable girl in the whole world. What word is Millie constantly using over and over again? Andrew? I... I, me, I can't, I can't do this, it's me, everybody picks on me, it's I, and that's the world, it's me, 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 nobody else but me. She doesn't care about her parents, she doesn't care about her sisters, everything she does is okay because she's doing it, that's the way she feels, it's me, 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 me. And you live that kind of a life, you're going to be very miserable. It's people who think about others and have concern about other people, they're the ones that are happy. As she's really selfish. She's super selfish. Everything's me. And she's very miserable because she's so selfish. As she lay in bed crying, suddenly she got an idea. She sat up straight in bed and exclaimed, I'll run away from home. Then I can do anything I want. Her heart beat with great excitement as she thought about all the fun things she could do. I can watch whatever I want on TV. I can go to bed anytime. I can dress the way I like. I can eat anything I want. I can go to any park whenever I wish, and no one can stop me. I'll be free at last. Millie could hardly sleep thinking about all the fun things that she could do. When morning came, she jumped out of bed and sneered, saying, This is the last day of my old life. I hope I never see this terrible house again. When school ended, Millie raced home. When she saw Mama working in the garden, she quickly went to Mama's purse and stole some money. Then she went to empty her piggy bank. When everyone is sleeping, she whispered, grinning from ear to ear, I'll climb out the window and run away. This is so, so exciting. Into her backpack, she put some candy and snacks. She then hid the backpack under her bed. Millie could not wait until nighttime. When everyone was sound asleep, she dressed quickly, grabbed her yellow purse and backpack, 
very quietly opened the window. This is going to be so much fun, snickered Millie as she crawled out the window. When she was a few blocks from her home, she threw her arms into the air and proclaimed, free, free, free at last. Now I can do whatever I want. This is the happiest day of my life. Millie went skipping down the road to the bus station saying, I'm so happy, I'm so happy. When she arrived at the bus station, she bought a ticket to the big city. She was so excited that she could hardly sleep on the bus. It was daytime when the bus arrived in the city. How does Millie feel here, Emma? Very, very happy. She is in euphoria. This is the greatest day of my life. I finally can get out of this house. I'm free at last. And she just thinks this is going to be the most wonderful experience. And you know there's some boys and girls that actually do this foolishly. They think that if you get out of the house, they can do anything they want. And we're going to see what happens to Millie here. But right now, she's the most happiest person in the whole world. That's the way she feels. But let's see what happens to her. I'm hungry, said Millie. Then with a big grin, she said, now I can eat whatever I want. She went into a restaurant and said, I want a large hot fudge sundae with lots of whipped cream. You want that for breakfast? Asked the surprised waitress. Yes, replied Millie. That's my favorite breakfast. An hour later, Millie moaned, Oh, my stomach hurts. For the rest of the day, Millie could not eat. What is Millie eating now for breakfast? Olivia? A large fudge sundae with a lot of whipped cream. Yeah, she's eating a large fudge sundae. Mm -mm. Just what she dreamed. Now she can eat anything she wants. Now your parents give you food that is healthy for you to eat. And you might not always like it. And you might complain about it. But they want you to be healthy. They know that you're going to live maybe the 20, 30, 40, 50. They want you healthy then also. And your parents are concerned what you eat. But now Millie can eat anything she wants, and she does. And she ends up with what? Isaiah? The stomach ache. Yeah, stomach ache. Oh, my stomach, my stomach. Well, why didn't you listen to mom and dad when they teach you how to eat and want you to eat healthy? Now she's suffering. Millie passed an amusement park. Oh, good, she exclaimed. I can go on all kinds of rides, and no one can stop me. But because of her stomach ache, Millie did not enjoy any of the rides. For the rest of the day, she just walked around the city. Millie was bored. When it was almost dark, Millie decided to go to the city park to find a place to sleep. Mama never trusted me to make my own decisions, she mumbled with a sneer. But now I can go anywhere I want, and no one can stop me. Millie strutted into the park. When she passed a group of boys, one of the boys pointed and shouted, Look! She's alone! The boys took off and ran to get Millie. Millie ran as fast as she could, screaming, Help! Help! But there was no one to help her. The boys were getting closer and closer. Millie raced to the top of the hill. Just as the boys were about to catch her, a police officer appeared. The boys quickly scattered into the bushes. Please help me, pleaded Millie. Those boys were chasing me. You'd better go home right now, warned the officer. It's dangerous for kids to be alone in the park. I'll walk you out of the park. Thank you so much, said Millie. Before this, Millie hated police, but now she was really glad to see one. How did Millie feel? about police before this event. Claire? She hated them. But now how does she feel? She's glad to see everyone. Yeah, now she's glad. She's in trouble. 
And her mom, remember, warned her, I don't want you to go to the park alone because it can be dangerous. I now I can do, I'm free, I can do anything I want. Ah, she's learning the lessons the hard way that sometimes parks are dangerous and these boys want to attack her. And he's, she's so thankful now. There's a police officer there and she's begging, please help me. And that's what police officers are for. They're to help you. They're not your enemy. You don't have to be afraid of them. If you're doing the right thing, if you're doing something bad, I don't blame you for not being wanting to see one of them. But they're there to help us and learn to appreciate those kind of people who are out there protecting our cities and our streets from evil people. I need to find a safe place to sleep, sighed Millie. She searched and searched for a place to sleep, but she could not find anything. Then she saw a bench on the edge of a small park. I'll just lie down and rest a while, she thought but she quickly fell asleep. When the sun shone in her face, it woke her up. Oh, my aching back, she groaned. A bench is a terrible thing to sleep on. Then her stomach began to rumble. I'm hungry, she said, but today I need to eat a good breakfast. I surely don't want another stomach ache. Millie found a restaurant and ordered orange juice, eggs, toast, and milk, the same food her mother often served for breakfast. After paying for her breakfast, Millie discovered she had only a few pennies left. She had spent most of her money in the amusement park. Now I can't do the fun things I planned, she murmured. Millie was miserable. All day she walked around the big city hoping to find some money. When she passed some street girls, they wanted her to join them. I'm not interested, stammered Millie. Then she said to herself, I don't want to look like that. It was past dinner time and Millie was starving. She looked in a garbage can to find something to eat. Oh, good, she exclaimed as she picked up a half-eaten hamburger and some cold French fries. She took one bite of the hamburger and a french fry. She spit out the food and grumbled. This tastes terrible. She kept searching for food, but she could not find any. She went back to the garbage can and found the same hamburger and french fries. This time she ate it, but she hated every bite. Why is Millie eating food out of a garbage can? The show one? It's because she wasted all of her money on rides and now she doesn't have enough money to buy any food. You need money to live. She took a little, she stole some from her mother. And you'd be surprised what you eat when you're hungry. Look at some of the foreign people, they're in garbage dumps looking for food. Children. You get hungry, you'd be surprised. You're not gonna be so fussy. You'll, you'll go out of garbage can too if you get real hungry. But that's life. And so I'm trying to warn you because sometimes boys and girls, so they got some silly ideas. I'm just going to run away, do whatever I want. That's what you think. Where are you going to sleep? What are you going to eat? Where are you going to live? Then they have these street girls. Come on, join us. She says, oh, no, no, I'm not going to go with you. And that's what some girls do. They end up ruining their lives because they want to run away from home. Don't you ever do such a, I'm going to say a stupid thing. That's stupid, dumb. And here she is eating food out of a garbage can. Right? She's a very unhappy girl. She didn't want to eat it, but that's all she had left. If your stomach rumbles, you'd be surprised what you will eat if, it get, if that really starts to hurt you. So you be wise. Learn to appreciate what you do have. Where am I going to sleep tonight? Millie wondered. I'm not sleeping on that bench again. My back still hurts. She finally found a pile of cardboard boxes behind an old factory. She strained her eyes, looking to the right and to the left. Good, she declared. It's safe here. Then she crept into one of the boxes. She found some newspapers and crumbled them up for a pillow. Fortunately, the night was warm. 
What is Millie doing here? Mercy? She's regretting what she did. Yeah, and what is she wishing for, Mercy? That she was safe in her bed. Yes. She would be safe in her bed. Now look at a nice pillow, paper, a cardboard box. She's groaning. That's her bed. That's her home now. Now remember, look at the cover here. Look at that smile. Oh, boy, this is going to be wonderful. I'm going to get out of this house once and for all. This is the happy memory. She raised her hand up here. This is the happiest day of my life. She's not too happy here, is she? She is miserable. She's crying. She's hurting. Right? And she feels very sad. Millie lay awake for a long time, shaking with fear. I hope nobody finds me, she sobbed as tears streamed down her face. Oh, how I wish I was safe in my bed. Now I'm all alone and scared. Why was I so foolish to steal money from Mama's purse and run away from home? Now Papa and Mama will never want me back. <laughs> Millie cried and cried until she fell asleep. <laughs> Meanwhile, Papa and Mama were searching every day for Millie. Where's my Millie? Mama would wail over and over. I don't know, Papa would sigh with tears, but we're going to search for her until we find her. Papa, Mama, Willie and Betsy put signs up all over town offering a reward for anyone finding Millie. What does Millie say about her dad and mom, Jocelyn? They'll probably never want her. Yeah, she feels, oh, my parents will never want me anymore. I stole from them. My parents don't love me. They don't want me anymore. Watch what happens now. That night, a cold front blew in. When Millie got up the next day, it was cold and rainy. Brrr, she chattered. I'm freezing. I hate to leave this cardboard box and get wet, but I'm starving. Millie went out into the freezing rain and walked to a shopping mall. On top of a table, she found a half-eaten sandwich. Oh, great, she said as she gobbled up the sandwich. But Millie did not know that a sick person had eaten that sandwich. That night, Millie got very sick. All alone, she lay in a cardboard box, moaning, shivering and throwing up. It was the most miserable night she had ever had. She cried and cried until she could cry no longer. The next morning, Millie felt slightly better. As she searched for something to eat, she passed a candy counter. My favorite food, she declared. If only I could have a piece of candy. Millie looked in her purse. She had only a few pennies left. Then she looked to the right and to the left. Quickly, she grabbed a piece of candy and ran. Stop that thief, screamed the woman. Hearing the woman, the store owner ran after Millie yelling, Thief! Catch that thief! A police officer heard the commotion. He looked around and saw Millie running toward him. When Millie came near him, he stopped her. The store owner told the police officer what had happened. Come with me, demanded the officer. The officer took Millie to the police station and called her parents. When Mama heard that Millie had been found, she shouted for joy. Then she exclaimed, we're coming right away. What do we see about Mama and Papa here? Emma? They're very happy to see Millie. They are very happy. Tears are flowing for Papa and Mama to see their girl again. That's how much your parents love you. And I put this in the storybook to make boys and girls realize how much your parents love you. Don't disappoint them. Sometimes your parents have to punish you, not because they hate you, because they're trying to correct you because you did something bad. And punishment is a form of love because they want to correct that bad thing that you're doing. And that's where you trust your parents and you learn to accept it. But remember, if you're smart 
Just listen to your parents, you'll never get punished again. So simple. Millie began to cry and shake all over. What will Papa and Mama do to me? To Millie's great surprise, when Papa saw her, he ran to her and gave her a giant hug. With tears streaming down his face, Papa said, We love you, Millie. We're so glad we found you. Then Mama wrapped her arms around her and began kissing her and saying over and over, We're so happy to see you. The police officers just smiled. They were glad they had saved another girl from the streets. What was the reaction of the police, Miguel? They were happy that they saved another girl from the streets. The police officers were very happy that they could rescue a girl from the street. And that's what they're there for, they help you. And that Millie now is again with her parents. So learn to appreciate the police officers who are there to help you. When Millie came home, she gave Mama, Papa, and even Willie and Betsy big hugs. We're so glad to have you back, said Betsy. Then with tears streaming down her face, Millie confessed, I'm so sorry for stealing and for all the bad things I've done. Papa, Mama, I was very foolish for not listening and trusting you. Living on the streets was terrible and very dangerous. I was alone and scared. I had no money, no food to eat, and nowhere to sleep. I thought that if I could do whatever I wanted, I'd be happy. But I was miserable. When Millie went to bed that night, Papa and Mama wrapped their arms around her and said, We love you, Millie. We're so glad to have you back home again. As Mama tucked her into a warm, cozy bed, Millie replied, Thank you, Papa and Mama. I'm so glad to be home. Now I'm the happiest girl in the whole world. And now, an award-winning song from Character Kids. Where I can live and thrive Cause now my attitude's changing I see the light This is where I should live My life Whoa, whoa, whoa. It's where I live my life Yeah, yeah Home sweet home There's no place like home Sweet 
Sweet home.